Hello, ABL followers. It is me again, Galia Aharoni of Aharoni Business Law. I'm the founding attorney at our law firm where we help small businesses start uh, and grow um, by helping them with business, employment, and intellectual property needs. So um, one of our recent videos, we talked about whether or not a small business needs limited liability, which is one of the biggest, most common questions we get asked. And the tie-in question to this is whether somebody should be an LLC. One of the main things we do is form LLCs for people and figure out whether or not they need one in the first place or whether they should be another type of entity as well. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, I do recommend checking out the limited liability video first so you have a little better context of um, why somebody would want to form an LLC to begin with to get that limited liability. But let's jump in. So first of all, just a short recap, do you even need limited liability to begin with? Because that's going to be the main benefit of having an LLC. So watch our other video. But generally, we're going to look at three things to figure out whether you even want limited liability, which is what is the general risk involved in running your business? What personal assets do you want to protect um, from running your business? And what is your tolerance of risk? Are you comfortable with some amount of risk or do you want no risk at all? Because what that limited liability is going to give you is protection of your personal assets. If someone sues the business, they'll only be able to go after the assets of the business and not your personal assets. So assuming we did this analysis together and we determined that it would be helpful for you to have limited liability in place, um, what are the pros and cons of being an LLC in California? So first of all, you get the limited liability. That's kind of the main reason why somebody is gonna to want to incorporate as an LLC or a corporation. Um, it's gonna give you that shield of limited liability protection. The next one is relative to corporations, LLCs tend to be a lot more flexible. There's a lot more flexibility built into the law as far as how you can pay the owners and how voting can work and how different you know, shares can interact with each other um, and how you can set up the company, um, which can be really helpful because corporations can be really rigid with a lot of those things. And sometimes there aren't workarounds to make it function the way you want. Whereas an LLC, you have a lot more flexibility to build your company in whichever way you want to build it. Also, LLCs have fewer legal requirements than uh, corporations do. So corporations have a lot more requirements as far as meetings and record keeping and minutes and things like that. So we do recommend that you still do a lot of those formalities, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, as far as the law goes, you're not legally required to do as many of those formalities as you are in corporations. So it's a little bit easier usually to start up and to upkeep. Um, and finally, you have more options as far as how your company is going to be taxed. So um, the IRS actually doesn't consider LLCs to be a legal entity, at least yet. So you're actually are given the choice of how your LLC is going to be taxed. You can be taxed um, as a uh, uh, as if you were a sole proprietor or a general partnership, which is means you get taxed just as if you were, you know, pass through taxation um, and uh, it doesn't get double taxed like a corporation does. Or you can also choose to be taxed as an S corporation or a C corporation. Um, and so those different options, uh, one of them might be better or worse for you, depending on how much money your company is making and how your company is running. So it's nice to have those options built in and you don't really have as many of those options with other entity types. So the cons of the LLC. Um, the biggest one for a lot of people is that in California, you've got a minimum $800 a year franchise tax board tax. And that just starts going up as well once you start making over $250,000 a year. So that $800 tax is whether you make zero dollars or more. If you make zero dollars, you still have to pay that $800 a year, um, which is a lot of money for a lot of people. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not nothing. So um, that's something you need to keep in mind that no matter how well your business is doing, you're on the hook for at least $800 a year. There is obviously some startup costs involved and just startup headaches because it's a lot, um, there's a lot more involved in forming an LLC than there is in just starting a sole proprietorship or a general partnership. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to budget for legal fees and for just a lot of time as well to form your company. Um, and there is some upkeep involved, like I said a second ago, um, although it's not required to have things like annual meetings of the owners or the officers, 
um, or to even have a board, um, we recommend having meetings, for example, of the owners, if the owners are the ones who are running the business, um, because that's going to show the court, if you ever are dragged into court, that you are taking your business seriously, that you're treating it as an entity separate from you. Um, and they're not going, it's less likely that the court will then just remove your limited liability and act like it never was there to begin with, which is, of course, the whole point of having an LLC is to have that limited liability. So you do there is some upkeep involved to make sure that your limited liability stays in place. The other con here is that if you are providing professional services, like if you're a lawyer or a doctor, nurse, dentist, uh, architect, acupuncturist, any of those kind of licensed um, professional service industries, you're not allowed to be an LLC. And that's partly to protect people from malpractice um, in California. Um, so you're, you're just not allowed to be one. There are other entity choices you can be but LLC is not one of them in California, which is kind of a bummer. And um, hopefully, eventually, California will create a separate entity type for limited liability professional services like other states do. So quick review here about different types of entities, just to give some context for LLCs. So um, if you're a sole proprietorship, you can only have one owner. You can technically be a married couple that will count as a uh, You'll, you can as one person under the law if you want to be to co-own as a sole proprietorship. Um, but other than that, only one person for a sole proprietorship. General partnership is similar to a sole prop, but you have two or more people. So these two types of entities, you do not get limited liability. So if the company gets sued, then you, you get sued. You're the same entity, basically, as your company. Um, the nice part is, though, you don't have, there's a lot less you have to do to start this company. Basically, as soon as you start doing business, you're a company um, and there might be, you know, local licenses involved or doing business as, you know, name registrations involved. But generally, you're not going to have to file something with the secretary of state and, you know, create operating agreements and bylaws and things. Um, although if you're a general partnership, we do recommend still having a written agreement among the partners. But generally, it's a lot easier to form. Taxes are going to be ta passed through taxation, which means your entity is not filing its own separate tax return. All of the money you make through the company is money that you are making personally, and that counts as your income, and you're getting taxed at whatever bracket you're already being taxed at. Um, so uh, depending on how much money you're making, this can be a really good thing or a really bad thing. Um, and these entities are available to professionals if you want, um, but not recommended because these professional services tend to be higher risk as far as lawsuits. So we recommend not being a sole proprietorship or a general partnership if you are uh, providing professional services to people. So LLC versus corporation um, versus sole prop and general partnership. So um, LLCs and corporations can be owned by a single person or more than one person. Um, they do both provide limited liability like we were talking about earlier. Um, and both of them require filing forms with the state. And there's going to be a lot of paperwork that you're going to want to do to properly form your entity and make sure your limited liability stays in place. Um, like we said before, LLCs can basically choose how they want to be taxed. Um, they can be taxed as either a sole prop if you're a single owner or a general partnership um, if you have multiple owners in your LLC. Or you can choose to be taxed as an S corp or a C corp, um, depending on what's best for you tax wise. Corporations can choose to be taxed as a C-Corp with a double taxation problem, which tends to be more expensive, or they also can be taxed as an S-Corp if they want. Um, all of these are available to professionals except for LLCs. So the next question I usually get is, well, should I be an LLC or an S-Corp? And so one of the things people get confused about is the fact that S-Corps are actually not really a type of entity on their own. They are a tax election. So you can form an LLC, and be taxed as an S corp, or you can form a corporation and be taxed as an S corp. Um, the main reason we would want to do this as an LLC, be taxed as an S corp, is because it can possibly save you taxes. So the number one, you know, response I give to this first is before you decide whether you're being taxed, you know, as a pass through entity or as an S corp. Um, talk to your CPA, run the numbers, figure out how much you think you're going to be making, how much you think you're going to be spending, how you're going to be paying yourself and then figure out if it's going to be beneficial for you to be an S-Corp or not. If it's not going to be beneficial to be taxed as an S-Corp, um, there's probably not very many other good reasons to be taxed, you know, to have that S-Corp election as an LLC. 
Um, if you do, if it looks like you would benefit from being taxed as an S Corp, um, the next thing to know is that there are additional legal requirements on your company and extra restrictions. Um, so S Corp taxation is actually not available to everybody. You have to have fewer than 100 um, owners. There are restrictions on how you're allowed to allocate um, rights, um, you know, voting rights and responsibilities and things like that among the owners. And one of the biggest ones that comes up for our clients is um, you're not allowed to be have an S Corp election if any of your owners are not United States residents. So, um, and this also sometimes can include spouses of owners, depending on community property and all that, all that stuff. So um, make sure to look into that if if uh, an S Corp tax election seems like something that might be good for your business. The final thing I wanted to talk, go into more is just LLCs versus corporations. So why would we be an LLC versus when would we be a corporation? So normally with the small businesses we work for, um, we tend to recommend LLCs as a default unless there's a compelling reason to be a corporation instead. And that's because LLCs are you know, a little bit cheaper, a little easier to form, a little easier to run, and they're more flexible. And generally taxes tend to be lower generally with an LLC than with a C-Corp. So, uh, but there are situations where a C-Corp is the best option. So things like if somebody is gonna be looking for investors for their business, a lot of times investors are gonna wanna see corporations instead of LLCs. Uh, if you're planning on selling your business in the future, sometimes your you know, potential buyers are gonna prefer a corporation over an LLC. If you want to go public someday, that's definitely, you're going to have to be a corporation instead of an LLC. Um, and so sometimes it's easier to start off as a corporation from the beginning instead of converting later. If you want to provide stock options to your employees, um, that is a reason to be a corporation instead of an LLC. Um, and sometimes occasionally there are tax reasons to be a corp, you know, be taxed as a corporation instead of a, um, an S corp or pass through taxation, such as, you know, you have an owner who's, who's out of the country and S corp election is not available. Sometimes C corp taxation will be better tax wise than, um, than your pass through LLC taxation. Um, and then finally, like we talked about before, there might be certain reasons just legally why an LLC might not be a good idea. Of course, if you're a professional like a lawyer or a doctor or an acupuncturist, et cetera, um, you can't be an LLC, so you might have to be a corporation. In California, there's a particular type of corporation for you called a professional corporation, and each industry is going to have different rules and requirements for how to set that up. Um, also in California, there are extra burdens on licensed contractors. Um, if they have LLCs, and those burdens tend to be so high that a lot of licensed contractors tend to prefer the higher burden, you know, tax burdens and extra costs kind of involved in a corporation instead of having to deal with those extra burdens of an LLC. So normally, except for certain circumstances, if a licensed contractor comes to us um, and want to incorporate, we'll often recommend a corporation for them instead of an LLC. So if you have questions and want to talk through what type of entity you should be, please feel free to contact us anytime. This is kind of our bread and butter and we love helping people with this. And um, the entity choice that you make now and moving forward can really have a dramatic impact on the success of your business, the growth of your business and the future of your business. So it's something to really think seriously about and make sure you do right um, so your business and your family can thrive in the future. So thanks for listening. Bye.